Hi, this is Dr. Ken Berry, family physician with almost 20 years of clinical experience. And I want to discuss with you for a few short minutes today, meat and cancer and my three thoughts about this. You may have seen some more uh, news articles about this in the mainstream lately. And what we really have to talk about here is, does meat cause cancer? Does red meat cause cancer? Does grilled meat, does the char on meat? Is there any real meaningful research or common sense or uh, any kind of academic learning that shows that red meat causes cancer? So let's talk about this. So whether we're talking about grass-fed, grass-finished panda massage meat, or we're talking about the cheapest hot dogs that you can buy at China Mart, there's someone out there, some expert, who's going to say, that'll cause cancer. You shouldn't eat that. That'll increase your risk of heart disease or something like that. And so let's dive into this a little bit and discuss this because I want you to be confident eating the proper human diet. I don't want you to be nervous or worried about this. So we've been told for about the last 30 years that maybe the saturated fat in meat is bad for us, that maybe when you grill meat, that's bad for you. Maybe you should eat white meat, not red meat. All of these things are based on things that we're going to talk about down below. And I want you to understand where this all comes from and then what you can do about it as soon as this video is over. So meat is without argument an ancestral food. There is anthropological data that we have been eating meat at, as long as we have been a species on this planet. I don't think there's any reputable anthropologist that would debate that. We can actually look at carbon and nitri uh, nitrogen isotope labeling in bones, whether someone died a week ago or they died 300,000 years ago. We can tell what their diet consisted of. Did they eat lots of meat and a little veg? Did they eat mostly veg and a little meat? Did they eat lots of seafood or did they eat mainly red meat? We can tell these things by looking at the carbon and nitrogen in the bones. So in anthropology, there's no argument about this. They know that human beings ate as much fatty meat as they could get their hands on, as much seafood as they could grab, as much fatty red meat as they could kill. That's what we've eaten since we have been Homo sapien sapien. So therefore, the claim that meat causes cancer or meat causes heart disease or ch charred meat causes this, that, or the other, those are extraordinary claims. Now, our, our good friend, whom we all should know, is Carl Sagan. He's not with us anymore, but I wish he were. He said, if you come at me with, and I'll, I'll paraphrase, if you come at me with an extraordinary claim, then you better have extraordinary evidence to back up that claim. And I think that applies not just to astronomy or to life on other planets. I think that, that applies to all science. If you make an extraordinary claim, you better have some damn good data to back that up. And so I consider that red meat or meat in any way could be in any way bad for human beings to be an extraordinary claim. So you better have good evidence. And so where does the majority of this evidence come from? The World Health Organization, the Harvard School of Public Health, they've been telling us now for 20 or 30 years that, that fatty meat's bad for us, that red meat's bad for us, that charred meat's bad for us. Some have even went so far as to say that that eating meat is as bad as smoking cigarettes for your health. So where do, what, what extraordinary data do they have to back up this extraordinary claim? All of the data that they uh, purport to show a causation or maybe even a correlation between eating meat and some sort of health problem is observational data that, uh, they, that is done over many years they will have the participants of these studies fill out food frequency questionnaires that ask questions like, how many cups of ribs have you eaten in the last month? I don't know how to answer that question. And probably the, the participants in these studies didn't know how, how to answer that question either. So they guessed, just like any of us would guess. And then also, the, none of these research studies were blinded. So if the researchers had a bias that bias would slip into their results. And that doesn't mean that they're evil. That just means they're human. This is human nature. That's why humans came up with the scientific method 
to protect the data and to protect the results from researcher bias. That wasn't done in any of these studies. And so actually the studies that the World Health Organization and the Harvard School of Public Health and other health experts use to try to scare us about eating meat are the weakest form of evidence you can act actually come up with. They are, it's the weakest form of research, the weakest form of science you can actually have. And so recently, the American College of Physicians came out with a series of four uh, studies, four review articles that basically destroy the arguments that there is credible research that meat is bad for you. And so they basically go back and look at all of these studies, these observational studies done with food frequency questionnaires, and they reach the conclusion, which I think is a very logical conclusion, that there is no extraordinary evidence there, that these are, they, and to quote them, either poor or very poor um, recommendations can be made from these. So basically flipping a coin would be better than listening to the World Health Organization about whether meat is bad for you or not. So let's go through my three thoughts about this. And I think they'll help you understand this and really never be tricked or fooled by this silly kind of research again. First of all, the anthropology. This, and this is, if you, if you like the way I do this, this is how I do every video on this channel. So you might want to consider clicking the subscribe button because this is how I think about medical and nutritional topics. First of all, what does our ancestry, our, the anthropology, let's go back and look at that. So there are multiple studies that show without doubt that if human beings could get fatty meat, that's what they ate as much of as they could hold. They ate the organs, they crash, cracked open the skull and got the brain, they cracked open the bones and got the marrow. They often left the lean meat for their dogs. Uh, but there is no anthropological evidence of a vegan society ever existing, at least for long enough to leave a anthropological record. Uh, so we know that there's, there's tons of credible anthropology showing, yeah, yeah, fatty meat is the proper food for humans. Should we eat some veg? Should we not? That's up for debate. But in every society that we can check the bones for nitrogen and carbon isotopes, we know that they ate as much fatty meat as they could get their hands on. Now, that's number one is our ancestry. Number two way I think about things is common sense. And I think Carl Sagan's comment is the most brilliant ever about common sense. If you come up with this new extraordinary claim, you better have extraordinary evidence. And the other side who says meat is bad for you, they just don't have any extraordinary evidence at all. In fact, the American College of Physicians calls their evidence poor or very poor which means they can't make any recommendations off that at all. The fact that they were trying to make recommendations off of that very poor evidence shows you that they have a preconceived bias and that they're trying to slip their bias into the results, just like every human does. There is no common sense that, that would say, oh gosh, meat might be bad for us. It makes no common sense whatsoever. We've been eating it forever. And even when it comes to the topic of grilled meat, charred meat, oh, there's char on this meat. Will that cause cancer? We have been cooking meat over an open flame for at least a million years as the genus Homo. At least a million years, if not longer. And so immediately you see the common sense of that. So if it was bad for us, we would have probably stopped doing that a long time ago. How is it now magically bad to char your steak over an open flame? It ain't bad. It's common sense. Unless you pr present me with some extraordinary evidence, then shut up. There's no, you have nothing to back it up. And then number three of all of my videos, I go through the meaningful research. I don't really put a lot of, um, I don't put a lot of, of, of faith in research that is deemed poor or very poor. I like to look at randomized studies and control studies where the researchers are blinded so that their preconceived bias can't slip into the results. And so the anthropology says we've eaten meat forever. The common sense says if you've eaten meat forever, then now meat therefore is not now bad for you. And then number three, is there any meaningful research to disprove that? No, there is absolutely none. 
So that's that's my three thoughts about does meat cause cancer? Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell right beside it so that when I have a bright idea like this, you'll be one of the very first to know. And then also we, my wife and I, uh, do a Facebook Live every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. You're welcome to join us if you do the Facebook thing and ask your questions there. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.